Hello my soccer universe, let's review everything going on in Germany and Austria during the week. We have a lot of cup action and we have a very interesting Bundesliga round to review. Um, quick disclaimer, I did not see any highlights of the German Cup because there were so many other things that I've been watching. But I still will go through the results because they were interesting and I saw a little bit what was happening. I am wearing Köln because Köln got the biggest and the most important win uh, this weekend and also it's carnival so we should wear the carnival jersey. That might be the last time because I think the next game will be a really tough one for Köln. Headlines. Well in the German Cup Leverkusen falls to lowly Essen in overtime. Overtime is also needed for Dortmund. And another Bundesliga team that was eliminated against the lower uh, division side was Köln against Regensburg in the Bundesliga round itself. We had Bayern grinding out a victory, Dortmund losing, um, and Leipzig, Leipzig, Wolfsburg and Frankfurt confirming their top four spots uh, in there. And of course Köln getting a derby win. In Austria, the four favorites go through in the quarterfinals of the cup, but it was never a straightforward story. Um, except Salzburg, everyone had their trouble against easy opponents, one would like to say. Let's jump right into it. Uh, here are the results from the German Cup. I mean, the first one that really sticks out is Rot-Weiss Essen. I mean, that's a traditional side, but they're in the fourth level. Although um, I saw a documentary, I think they're now uh, led by an economics professor, which I find very interesting. Um, holding on to Leverkusen, giving them a nil-nil. Leverkusen in the 105th minute through Bailey actually gets the lead, but then Essen can score twice through Kefke and Engelmann and the f funny thing about Engelmann is that he is the mo the player who has scored the most goal in the fourth division in Germany. That I think is a pretty neat stat. Dortmund had a lot of trouble with uh, Paderborn. Yes, within 60 minutes they're up to two, two nil and 2 nil and you think they're cruising. However, uh, Paderborn in the 79th and then it Deep in stoppage time, a penalty after a Holland goal was disallowed. Also deep in stoppage time, so in 97th the penalty is given. It's 2-2, but Holland in 95th gets it over the line. But that was a scare for Leverkusen. Um, no problems for Leipzig, uh, Bremen, Wolfsburg, maybe only a 1-0. Regensburg against Köln was also interesting. Because, like um, Dortmund Kern had a very quick 2 0 lead, uh, Jacobs and Dennis in the 4th and the 22nd. But then uh, Kennedy pulls one back for, uh, for Regensburg, then uh, Sch uh, Schmidt's goal for Kern is disallowed, and George can actually equalize. Then Kern has a penalty late in the game, a 78th minute, and the penalty is missed, and the game goes into extra time and into penalties, where Regensburg misses first, but Kern misses the last two. And Köln unfortunately is out. The big clash between Gladbach and St uh, between Stuttgart and Gladbach finishes with a Gladbach victory. We had today the draw and we get a very two very interesting quarterfinals with Gladbach and Dortmund. And at the moment, if you look at the table, the even better one between Leipzig and Wolfsburg. Uh, in a way, you would want to see this as a semi-final, but I think it's it's a very uh, intriguing quarter-final already. Then Regensburg plays home to Werder Bremen and Essen to Kiel. And Kiel, you know, two penalties. First they eliminate Bayern and now they eliminate Darmstadt on penalties. Maybe it will go to penalties as well. We have to see. Bundesliga. I didn't see the snowstorm ahead against Bayern game. This was a game that Bayern was grinding out. Lewandowski missing a penalty. Then the goal by Koma was badly deflected into net, and Hertha late had quite the chances to actually get the uh, get a result. They don't. Hertha is in trouble. Bayern can fly to Qatar to get there um, to go now to the Club World Cup where they will be playing. I think tomorrow. So they have a quite. Uh, Strong schedule come, come, coming up. Wolfsburg um, in a game that was rather even. And then Gerhard plays a wonderful pass to Weghorst. 1-0. And from then on, it's all Wolfsburg. Uh, Riedle Baku with uh, <laughs> more or less a uh, 
hat trick, but it was an offside hat trick because two of those were disallowed. Um, the first and both of them right fully, 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 fully so, but he gets another goal assist by Vekos and Wolfsburg really, really, really impressive under Oliver Glasner, who previously coached Lusk very successfully. So now he's doing great in Germany. Um, that's very, very impressive to see in his second season. And I know that Didi Hamann in the studio said that for him, Wolfsburg is currently playing the best football in Germany, although I think Frankfurt might have a say in that as well. The most entertaining game was Leverkusen against Stuttgart. First half it was all Le Le Leverkusen who hit or in the second minute the bar, then Demir by scores two um, off of uh, Leon Bailey assist. I mean the first one was a Leon Bailey shot that was um, a nice move. Uh, the goalie could not save, uh, save it and Demir by really with great skill uh, converts it. But in between those two goals, also Gonzalez is a come Kalajic came, came on. Kalajic in the second half really gave Stuttgart trouble. I mean, he completely uh, declassed uh, Tabsoba on the uh, goal to make it 1 2. And then in the 55th, he takes a shot and it is cleared by the Leverkusen defender with the hand. The panel is not given, and Leverkusen goes on to the other side, and Leon Bailey after the RB assist. Again, nice move, makes it 3-1 Leverkusen. The, ref the referee is not looking at it. He is waiting for VAR to say something and VAR says this stance. This is an absolute disgrace and this is where the game turned. If it's 2-2 Stuttgart, I think the game stays in there. Stuttgart doesn't give up. I mean, Wirtz makes it 4-1, Kalajic with his second makes it 4-2 and then Gray 5-2. But I think that one call really broke the game, although Leverkusen deserved to win that one. Freiburg also deserved the one to win against uh, Dortmund. Yes, Dortmund had good chances, but then right after the half, John Vio Jung and uh, Schmidt from wide range, both of them, and the second one definitely goalkeeper. Means they give Freiburg a comfortable 2 0 lead. I mean, the game was on the edge, uh, Dortmund having some good chances, but so did Freiburg. Mukoko in the 7 6th, 16 year old, uh, pulls one back, but Dortmund cannot find the equalizer. And another big blow for Dortmund, who will have a tough time finishing in the top four, one has to say. Uh, Mainz gets a win over Union Berlin, rather surprisingly, through a near Kate penalty that you have to see. I mean, that goes on the inside post, and then five sounds and Dortmund will be behind the other post. It goes in the internet and it was a great chance also for Mainz. Mainz deserved to get this win. Also playing in car, 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 car jerseys, which I would say I like this one a whole lot better. Uh, the Leipzig 3 0 over Schalke is nothing really much to talk home about. There were not many, many chances. Then Schalke makes two defensive errors. Uh, Skodra Mustafi, of all, uh, involved and it's 3 0. And for Gladbach Köln, also, it has to say we cannot say much because Köln had three chances more or less and converts two of them rather efficiently and both of them were r helped by Köln, especially the second one. Rekpecai in the third minute already makes it 1-0, Neuhaus can equalize and then Rekpecai really this a nice takes a nice assist from Clark Klappach to make it 2-1. Um, Stindl misses a big one uh, for Gladbach to make it 2-2 and Köln hangs on to a really really important victory that they were celebrating duly, uh, kind of you know in the first game, uh, when Gladbach won in Köln, uh, player went to the Köln corner flag and put his uh, jersey on. Now they were celebrating with uh jersey in the Gladbach corner flag and everyone was happy on the Gladbach camp. Uh, Frankfurt, nice goal by Kostic, take a 1-0 lead, but right after the half, Bebu with a great in individual action makes it 1-1 and a game that Frankfurt completely dominated suddenly went out of the hand. However, Ndika heads it in after a Kostic assist and shot the after Arthur Silva again after a Kostic assist, who is amazing at the moment, makes it 3-1 and that calms the game and Frankfurt can play it home rather easily. The game between Bielefeld and Bremen was postponed due to a heavy snowstorm. There were a lot of snowstorms in uh, Western Germany, Germany and they couldn't get the um, game ready and so we have to see when this game is played. I would actually assume they could probably do it in midweek but let's see. So in the table we have it now a little bit unbalanced because two teams have a game less. 
not much changed. Freiburg getting ahead of Union, but if you look at the distances, I mean, we had Wolfsburg winning, we had Frankfurt winning, we had Leverkusen winning, and we had Dortmund losing, so Dortmund is losing touch with the top four spots, uh, as does Gladbach. So those two are really, really in trouble. And going back to the German Cup tie, Leipzig Wolfsburg is two against three, Dortmund Gladbach is, is only six against seven, although it's the bigger name matchup. Uh, on the bottom, Schalke now really, really in trouble. Uh, we have Hertha just teetering in the edge of relegation. Augsburg, Köln looking a little bit safer there, but still they have to get their points. Um, Mainz gave themselves a big shot in the arm and as I said, the top four. Dortmund now is not favored to finish in the top four again at the moment. Um, speaking of teetering edge, with Bielefeld having a game less, they are actually at the moment ahead of Hertha. And we can see who are the big disappointments. Dortmund is Hoffenheim, it is Hertha is the biggest disappointment. Whereas Bayern is largely outperforming their own expectations, which I find rather remarkable. And so they are the big story of the season. No, not really. Uh, that measure is not really working all that well in that case. But expected points is the one where we really want to look into uh, Bayern cruising 10 points uh, on average to win the title. I mean, I think it seems a foregone conclusion. Even more so, a Schalke finishing in last spot. I think Schalke's chance of survival are rather, rather, rather slim. Hertha still above Bielefeld. Mainz having a shot. And you can see Augsburg, Köln um, looking safe-ish, but have to be careful. If you look at the top four, we have Wolfsburg and Leverkusen uh, closing up top four. Frankfurt goes and would go in the Europa League and Dortmund only in sixth spot at the, at, at the moment. It's a rather big upheaval. And, you know, I thought that those three were Champions League teams at the, uh, at the beginning of the season. I'm missing quite a few good German teams in there. The upcoming round we have... Um, I think Frankfurt Köln is an interesting one. I mean, Gladbach, Wolfs, uh, Wolf, Wolfsburg, Gladbach, of course, is the big one there. Uh, we have Bayern playing on Monday because of the Club World Cup. Have that in mind. Uh, Dortmund, Hoffenheim, this is a must win. And I think Leverkusen, Mainz also. I think the 3.30 slot might not look too bad again on Saturday. But also the Frankfurt, Köln and the Wolfsburg, Gladbach matchups. There's interesting stuff right there. Austrian Cup. You see the results. Kaffenberg is a second league team. Um, were down in the 15th minute to uh, Wolfsburg, got the equalizer just before halftime, and then it goes all the way to extra time, where Wolfsburg very, very, very late after a red card given to the Kaffenberg player gets the win. Sturm Graz was up a man against Vienna. All this team in Austria, but also not even the second league. That's uh, I think they're playing in the Vienna league, which is the third tier. Only 1-0, Janschen in the 63rd. Salzburg, no problem over Austria, Vienna, uh, Koita and Adeyemi. Not a glorious win, but a win nonetheless. And then Lusk, I was really hoping that once they show a good, a good um, game, they start out well, had a big chance, and then Klagenfurt. Honestly, up until the 60th minute, Klagenfurt should have scored three. They only get the 1-0 through Rusek uh, after a corner, which again, why can't we defend corners? Uh, have big chances before the half and after the half, well, especially after the half, they are running alone onto goal. Uh, big luck there, and then Lask turns on. Eggestein uh, make, make, makes it one, Balic makes it 2-1. Uh, two, two both Eggestein played from the beginning, but uh, was a by Potsman who came on. Uh, Balic came on uh, at the half, uh, no, in the 60th, and that kind of changed the, the dynamic of the game. They even get a penalty. And I said it to my wife, and funnily enough, we just before that we saw uh, Manchester City missing one against Liverpool, won't say much more now, against the, uh, off of the girl. Last gets a, a penalty and say, yeah, I would be happy if they make it 3-1, put the game to bed, go home, and phew, we just uh, escaped. No, Grubas has it safe, really badly shooting, and I don't know who should take penalties at last because they are all not making them. It is galling, to be honest. 
And so it comes as it should come, uh, late, late in stoppage time, as a free kick that is deflected onto the bar, uh, on, onto the upright corner, corner kick, and really badly defended, uh, defended how it makes it 2-1, 2, one, two, two. Overtime, last thing I needed because I wanted to actually finishing Liverpool City. No, we had to stay with that, that, that game. My nerves got eased because Balic after a really nice Michael pass makes it 3-2 and right there after Eggestein four minutes later makes it 4-2. Game safe? No. Yaritz pulls one back. But of course three minutes later Potsman if another uh, was it was it actually car contact makes it 5-3. <sighs> First win in Pershing uh, this season uh, in the you know since the other stadium is being torn down. There's not much left of it. So yeah, the good news is that the draw gives us an away game to Wolfsburg, which is a game that we just won uh, two weeks ago with a three-nil scoreline rather convincingly. Stuttgart playing Salzburg. Uh, so yeah, I think. There's a path to a final there. We don't have to play Salzburg, Sals, Sals, but it will not be easy. The games have not been turned, the, uh, the dates have not been confirmed yet, but it will be 2nd and 3rd of March there. In Austria, we have a midweek round, and that's why the overtime hurts you more. Lask has to play at St. Burton's. Rapid against Wolfsburg is a big one, and then Salzburg against Austria. We just had that in the cup. By name, big one. Uh, in reality will not be a big one and then the week end round the big game again for Lask against Sturm Graz uh, that will be an important one Rapid plays in Altach and Salzburg in Tirol potentially trip up games I don't really see it and so that's all I can tell you about what happened in Germany and Austria give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video drop a line below if you want to add something I think I talk about pretty much every game a whole lot uh, subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon as it will remind you whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!